Old camera. <laughs> Everyone was asking, just like, who's the person holding the camera? It's this guy right here. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. hey. I didn't even think about my hair. What should I do with my hair? Hello everyone and welcome to another video of my life here in Japan. My name is Anim and I'm an American living in Japan for eight years now. In today's video, I'll be walking around Tokyo Station wearing a Japanese yukata. Since making this channel and moving abroad, people have always asked me what it's like to be black in Japan. So I made a video about it and then people asked me, what is it like being black in Japan? <laughs> so I made another video and the process kept repeating. Finally, I decided to just record myself walking in Tokyo's red light district in Shinjuku to show you for yourself, without words, what life was like for me as a black woman in Tokyo. Big mistake. <laughs> that video went viral. And seemingly, many people who have never come to Japan saw that video and made wrong accusations about my life in Japan. Let's just say I learned a lot about perception after that video. So let's try again. How do Japanese people treat me in Japan? I was dating in Japan? Have I had any bad experiences in Japan? I'm glad you asked. Let's get started. Just like the previous video, look at everyone around me. Whether I'm wearing tight clothes, a yukata, formal wear, or my PJs, which I don't, <laughs> the vast majority of people don't look or seem to care. Of course, Tokyo being the most populated city in the world, statistically, there will be people who stare at you but again, if you look around, they're not the majority. This is why I feel safe and feel like I can be myself here in Japan. As a foreigner, many times I am already treated as other, so there's no point in trying to fit in. Instead, I feel the freedom to dress and be however I choose because no matter what I do, the result will be the same. People going about their own business and leaving me alone. I love my home country, but what I tried to point out in my last video was I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing these same outfits back in the US. Most likely there'd be people gawking or calling out to me. When it comes to how I'm treated in Japan, honestly, the most times I've been treated poorly in Japan was from other Asians and Westerners here. Did you ever wonder why some foreigners talk about Japanese people like they're naive and don't know anything about racism or the outside world, while other foreigners in Japan won't stop talking about racism and sexism in Japan? I have a theory. The Japanese language is a high context language, while English is a low context language. Think of it this way. If you were to listen to a random audio recording in English, you'd most likely understand what's happening, who's speaking, and what type of environment the people are in. Japanese is the opposite. You need to understand the context in order to understand the words. This is why one word like sumimasen can mean excuse me, I'm sorry, or thank you 
depending on the context. Next, Japan is a collective society where they all try to fit in. No one wants to stand out. Even if a Japanese person was racist, because of this collective thinking, they wouldn't be able to act out on their racism. At least not overtly or in a way that a person who doesn't speak Japanese would be able to pick up. Because of the fear of sticking out, they are forced to behave cordially, even to strangers they may not necessarily like. It's because of this that I believe I'm given the chance to show people who I am, compared to some racists who act out immediately upon seeing me because I'm black and acting out because of what I am. But while their speech and actions may be kind and fair in professional situations, their actions prove otherwise when they're given the chance of who to sit next to on the train or what type of person they approach because they find them attractive. And this brings me to dating. How is dating in Japan? Honestly, I hate this question, but along with what it's like being black in Japan, it's the second most common question I get. Not all Japanese people behave the same. Not all foreigners or black people will have the same experiences. So I guess what people want to hear when they ask this question is dating stories? <laughs> In my experience, when given the choice, Japanese people are more likely to approach other Asians or white blonde women compared to any woman of color. I have to be careful with my wording because many people will hear this and then take away that Japanese people don't like dark skinned people, but this is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, Japanese guys will often approach Asian and white women on the streets, bars, events, and dating apps. However, for many darker skinned women, while you may be approached, it's usually best if you make the first move. Some of my Japanese guy friends have told me how they didn't think some darker skinned foreign women liked them, so they didn't even try. If you make the first move, you're more likely to have success. But I have to admit, as a woman who's used to being approached, it takes a lot for me to make the first move. <laughs> but, ganbatteimasu. After you do connect with a guy, generally dating is very slow. At least in my experience. Expect to go on dates and be just a friend for a few months before they make any real romantic moves or ask you to be their girlfriend. Is this your first time? No, I've been here. I had a photo shoot here too. Oh, there's another person. <laughs> Finally, my bad experiences in Japan. When I talk about my life in Japan in a positive light, I have people disagree with me and tell me how much Japanese people hate black people. It seems people know the narrative they want to see black people being discriminated against, and anything that goes against that narrative is not true. In my experience, I've never really felt any racism against myself or other black people, but I have seen and experienced prejudice. Oftentimes, Westerners who come here mistake situations that are not racist as the same type of racism they would face in their home countries, mainly because they don't speak Japanese. For instance, 
This woman touched my hair. Many people may think, why is she touching your hair? You're not an animal. But in reality, in Japanese, she told me that I had a hair out and asked if I wanted her to fix it for me. Next, these women were very obviously looking and talking about me. If I didn't speak Japanese, I'd probably think they were laughing at me and give them a dirty look. In reality, they're saying how cute I look. They don't know that I speak Japanese. A lot of my quote unquote bad experiences in Japan can be summed up like this. My language ability wasn't so great when I first came to Japan. So my defenses were high, and I thought even the smallest thing, like an old lady staring longer than usual at me on the train, was bad. Only for that same lady to come up to me and tell me I was cute. Don't get me wrong, I have had bad experiences in Japan from Japanese people. Like, when I first came to Japan, I was an English teacher, and the principal was dying laughing when he saw me and the Okinawan gym teacher next to each other. He was laughing because our complexions were so similar. Or when I used to teach young kids, they would call me unchi, which means poop or gorilla. And the other teachers wouldn't tell the kids to stop. So it was up to me to fix their behavior. I would call them bird poo. There was even this time where an old man was talking about how black women have big asses in front of me because he thought I couldn't understand Japanese. But he ran away after he realized I could. These situations happen, but they're not really bad in comparison to actually being hurt or killed because of my skin color in my home country. Anyway, this is what life is like for me as a black woman in Japan. Please don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.